All right, it's been 30 seconds. I can assume we're live. Yep. All right. Hello, we're the Nostalgia Critic, and we watched it so you don't have to. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the 10th episode of Filthy Casuals. Uh, hello. How's it going? Should we just jump into it? I feel like we're not actually live. Um, I can't tell. Uh, yep, yep, we're live. Oh, did, so you don't have... Okay, good. Yep, I'm watching it right now. Excellent. At least someone is. Anyway. Alright, so what are we talking about today? I believe we both finished watching Cuties, so... It's, uh, I mean, it's it was, it, I felt right. it was kind of inevitable we were going to talk about this film. Yes. Right. Uh, because it did spark so much outrage, so watching Cuties was, I think, just going to en going to be something we did. Yep. Yes, and we both and both of us watched it. We watched it since that's the only way you can really. Or the best way you can discuss the movie is to have actually watched it. Yes. Yes. Yes, we did. We watched it, and you got so yeah. You guys don't have to. Really, don't don't watch this film. Don't don't do it. It's bad. So I think what we're gonna do is individually give our opinions on the movie, and they go through like a plot summary, I guess. Yep, sounds it, good. Like go through who, the movie itself and <clears throat> discuss that. So if you do, you want to start or do you want me to start? Um, I I guess I'll go first. All right. It is a it's a very very uncomfortable movie. It at at first it the movie seems promising in like the first five minutes, but it quickly falls apart when when the protagonist meets one of the one of the dancing girls, and then it just kind of steadily it just steadily goes downhill from. Yeah, there are there are some aspects about the story that I actually found kind of interesting like the part with the protagonist's father like the father and her very conservative like islamic household that stuff was actually interesting it's just uh, everything else the main plot that trying to become friends with these girls are just obviously bitches and that she herself just becomes this very insufferable person it's just ugh. yeah the whole thing is yeah. I mean so I and so like the I assume that like the yeah, like like some people like defendants of defenders of the movie I've brought up, it does condemn the child exploitation thing, but it it's done way too late into the movie and it doesn't change the fact that it still has minors dancing and, extremely sexy. And it's very ways. arguably one scene from what I can remember. Like, it's one scene that in the movie says, this is what we've done is wrong. Yeah, and that's just, it's right at the very end after they all perform and, like, just some of the, the a lot of the grown-ups are just shaking their head. And there's, like, only one creepy-looking dude that's nodding. Yeah. Kind of the movie implies that he's a pedophile. Yeah, that that's it. So, I think... Brian hit the nail pretty much on the head. Like, this, it, if I, I would describe this movie in very few words, and those, that, I, I can describe this movie basically in two words. Profoundly uncomfortable. Profoundly. Like, it, the sense of uncomfort begins okay. about maybe 10 to 15 minutes in. Well, do, I think uh, I think after the first dance scene they have, after the first dance scene, that's 
that sense of uncomfort settles into your stomach. Yeah, I was good. I was and kind of just right. keeps going. Oh yeah, it, yep. It, it around. I think it was around the like the like the forty minute mark is where it gets shit. Just hits the fan. They just go yeah. crazy with. Hello, John Rice. They they play with each other's asses. It's these yeah, are ele- it's... eleven year old kids. We watched it, so you won't have to, John. Yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah, I I was curious, Clayton. Like since or since you're gay, how how like how like, does this make you uncomfortable? Or look, or, uh, look, I am attracted to the male physique. That does not mean I don't appreciate the female physique. It just doesn't excite me sexually. However. If a 11-year-old boy were to dance in that sort of provocative, inherently sexual way that they did in Cuties, I would have the same problem with it, because young boys should not be be sexualized this way. Agreed. Just, like, there's a se- several times throughout the movie where I'm constantly having to cover my eyes. It just... Oh, it just... no, dude... So I, I, I basically skipped through the final performance scene. I couldn't do it. I couldn't sit through it. I was like, what the fuck am I watching? I mean, I I, can't, I never skipped anything because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. Since there were times I skipped forward because I was like, all right, I know what's happening. And then I was like, and then I went back to just make sure I, I knew what happened happened. At the final performance, though, I was like, nope, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I know what's going to happen. I know what happens next, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I dipped. I got out. I had to take a break, actually, during the middle of this movie, cause, several times during this movie, because I was just like, no, I can't. Yeah, I cannot. I, I had to, I've had to pause several times. The beginning of the movie. So, let, sh- let's do run scene by scene i guess as much as we can so the movie begins with the new family with the main character's family and i cannot remember her name for the life of me ari Uh, or something amy amy Amy? uh so amy's family has just moved into a i guess communal project house in france and they are uh, she's an extremely they, conservative Muslim household. Yeah, they go to like this. I guess the female equivalent of mass for Muslims, and she sees one of as they're leaving. Uh, Amy sees one of the girls dancing in the laundry room. Oh God! Which and is, she's which dressed in like. She's dressed in, like, a leather yeah, pants. Yeah, she has, like, leather pants on and a crop top, which, at first I was like, okay, it's fine. Because it doesn't actually, like, the the camera work doesn't imply anything. If this girl were maybe, like, if this were, like, if I didn't know what was coming, this would have been com- flown completely under my radar. Up to a point... Because up to a point, it's perfectly fine. It's just someone dancing in the laundry room, and people will do. And if they're unobserved, or even like girls will dance sexually. But at the point where she sort of bends over the ironing board, I was like, "Oh, okay." So we're doing also she, this. also she like she straightens her hair with the fucking iron. Yeah, look, I'm I'm not, I have no comment about that because I don't know anything about straightening hair. So, so I don't know if it can be done with an iron. Just, so I I was like I'm willing to let that one slide, but the fact that she just sort of bends over the ironing board and like lays out like I was like oh oh so we're going here this early all right. And then the next scene that sticks out to me 
is the fact that it, they do sort of like a mannequin challenge, which sort of date, which dates this movie very heavily, by the way. They do a mannequin challenge as soon as they get to school, the main group of girls. Oh, that's what that was? Yes. I completely forgot about the mannequin challenge. Yeah, exactly. It, it dates the movie. But as soon as, like, that's the main character's, like, first time seeing all four of the cuties, quote-unquote, uh, doing their th- being friends and shit. So, like, five minutes, and, like, two minutes later, she steals a, f- no, she did no, okay, so, then, so, that's the first time she sees the cuties, then she sees them dancing in, like, a train, I guess, like, an underpass right. or something? Yeah, <laughs> and then, yeah. They then they and then they throw rocks at her. Yeah, they ca- Yeah, they they find out that they, that she was like spying on she, them. Hey, like the white her- girl sees them, her spying them spying on her, her spying on them, and they throw rocks at her. Yeah, one nails her right on the forehead, and then later in the movie they later in the movie they mock her, they make fun of her. It's literally the next scene. Yeah, the next scene she shows up at school. And she's just like, oh, oh, hello. Oh, yeah. look at this massive wound you have on your head. And then a couple scenes after that, the girl that lives in the same, like, apartment complex as her, her disinfects the wound. Like, she has, like, a bag of something. I assume it's, like, soap or something. And she place she like spits on it and puts it on the wound and yeah, these are but... like i uh, go on these are the opening scenes of the movie and these are what introduce us to our characters our ki- our main character over the co- in between these has stolen has o- has proceeded to steal a phone to steal someone else's phone like that's that's the first notable action she does as a character. She steals from someone else. And even before that, I think she also stole like those uh, prayer beads. From oh yeah, phone. yeah. And gives them to gives them to her little brother for uh, like a, as a gift. Yeah, basically. Which, which I'll bring up. The little brother is the only char- the only good character in the entire film. He's he's just so. He's just so blissfully innocent. I just don't want anything bad to ever happen to him. Yeah. And then, so, I think the next most egregious, what was the next, what's the next most egregious scene? Because we can basically skip through this. Uh, Let's see here. Let's look at all the notes I have jogged down. Um, uh, There was, um, she saw them all, I guess, messing around inside, or I guess, just being noisy and just, uh, inside, like, a grocery store, I think. Yeah, but that's not, like, and I didn't think anything much of that scene. Unless they were shoplifting or something, I didn't think much about it. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think. So, okay, so... The, I guess the next part I have is is when, when she films them dancing. Yeah, she did... Like, she, no, 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 there's something egregious before that, or at least something I oh, found egregious before she, that. She watches, oh yeah, she watches a music video of these act, these underage girls all quirking. Yeah, there's that. There's that. I think that happens after she joins up to the group, but that... before that, that, like, when they agree to let her film, it's during a, the scene before that is it cuts to her in the bathroom. Like, straight up on the pot, doing her business. And I'm just sitting here like, no. Uh, No, that's wrong. That is so wrong on so many levels. 
Oh, it's the part where she's at, at the school and she like yes. overhears the girls talking about like rape. Yeah, basically. She overhears uh the girls talking about like um someone's gross face, I think. Yeah, and then like she's, and then after, afterwards they they basically tell her to go film a guy in a bathroom. Yeah. They t- they tell her to take a picture of his dick. Yeah, basically. After that, she films them, and we are now about forty-two minutes in. Okay, so I think the best, I guess, the best parallel I'd give this to is the movie The Sandlot. I wouldn't even give it that parallel. It's not worth that. Yeah, The I, Sandlot I, I, is a worth what is a good movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah the I'll Sandlot is a good movie, and the characters involved are actually like thought out. Like, there's a reason they act the way they do. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and, which I was going to bring up just how it's like, like a poor man Sandlot, the neighbor I girl. Call, I would not call this man a poor man Sandlot. Sandlot 2 is a poor man Sandlot. This is I mean, unworthy not, of c- comparing to any sort of coming of age story because it is not that. It, the movie itself, after about the 42 minute mark, proceeds down a path of sexualizing its main characters. Not very, very blatantly. Like, not only the camera, not only through the camera work, but through the story itself. It, the characters are sexualized. And yes. it's not, like, treated with any sort of dignity. It's not like, yes, this is something young girls go through, trying to find their own identity with what their parents would expect of them and what they, what their peer group expects of them. Yeah, it's... I think... I'd, I'd say probably the the worst the worst scene would probably be the one where they're all dancing on the stairs and the camera constantly zooms in on like their on their parts, like zooms on their ass, their thighs. It's yeah, just that was a bad scene, but horrible. So the first hint, so you get the first hints in about the first ten minutes of the movie, with uh, the Latina girl and her her hair straightening, but you don't really see the first. Shot the first like, oh, this is bad shots. Don't start until the first dance scene, which happens about forty-two minutes into the movie, and it is actually not bad. If this were not shot the way it is, and it is all shot composition, and that I'm talking about, that first dance scene would have been fine. But it is shot, there are multiple shots just shoved in randomly when they don't need to be of close-ups of, like, these girls' asses and their, like, them, like, uh, doing the, doing the worm in the air, that kind of thing. Like, there's very unnecessary shots that you sort of, that sort of begin to become more prominent in the movie. Yeah, so I guess I guess back to the plot. So and initially there were there's five girls counting the main character. Then then they kick they kick the fat one out. Yeah, they basically catfish uh the Mexican girl's brother. Like they Basically, they catfish the Mexican girl's brother and oh, they fight. Just, I thought it was just some random guy. No, it's it's her brother. That's why she has that reaction. I thought it's because a guy yelled her and said, I, "I remember the guy telling her that she was a kid." So I figured he thought. No, it was her brother. Okay, I'll take your word because I don't want to rewatch the movie. Same. It it I'm fairly certain it was her brother, but. He, they basically catfish this guy, and then they kick the fat girl out of the group. 
And then, after that, I think it's after that. There's a scene. Okay, so we need to go into the subplot. So the subplot is that the um, the main character's dad has taken a second wife. Yes, that and part was actually interesting. I didn't find it interesting. I thought it was utterly pointless to the movie as a whole. As a whole. Yeah, but if the movie revolved around that instead, it would have made for a better movie. Like the a, a main character finds out not through by basically eavesdropping. And so she has a dress and she she's sent a dress to wear for the wedding. And she there's a and this dress basically becomes a thing that haunts her as she goes through the movie. And at one point, the dress bleeds, and it bleeds on the floor and everything. And I'm just, I, I was stunned and shocked. And then they, and then, because she goes out and, um, misses the qualifier for the dance contest which is the ultimate so the the goal at the end of the movie it's it's Eddie's million dollar hot dog cook off it's um it's the musical at the end of high school musical blah 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 it basically it's the ultimate event for any coming of age story so she misses the qualifier and she goes home And she's basically cursed out by this old lady that live that lives with them. I don't know who she is. I think they call I, her auntie, but I, I think it's just some old hag that lives in the the apartment complex. It turns out she got her period. And they show us, not directly, thank God, but her genes are dark. Yep. Even, I think the old lady even like, actually kind of laughs at her. Yeah, she does. She laughs at her. She's like, oh, that happens to all women. And one day, and you know what happens? When I was your age, I was married. It was like, mm, mm, we're going to touch... We're not going to touch that. We're going to leave that alone. We're going to focus on the fact that you had a shot with a period, with a young girl experiencing what is very, 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 very likely her first period. And she has just bled into her pants. And you have chosen to do a wide shot of her standing in the door in a doorway jeans soaked through and that's it there there's no need for greater context there that is the one shot i would tell anyone about the in this movie and they would immediately say what the fuck is wrong with that movie then after that the movie sort of takes a downhill spiral as if it wasn't going downhill already yeah uh, the 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 boulder that is this movie basically hits a bump and gets an extra boost of speed after this point the young girl our main character amy basically becomes an irredeemable bitch yep she becomes she becomes just like the other girls. Yeah, basically. She she just becomes so awful. She multiple times gets in a fight with, in fights with people. 
one of which we'll talk about, but there's... No, no, we need to talk about that before we talk about the next thing. So, there's the rival dance crew that we have that's barely in the movie. They might as well not exist. One of them... Uh, By the way, there is underage boob in this movie, if you ever wanted to see that. Oh, yeah, that's right. When the... Yeah. Yeah, one of the girls like punches the fat girl in the boobs repeatedly. No. One of, during when uh Amy watches the rival dance crew's uh video. Well, she one of the girls in the crew is doing a move and she like hooks her thumb in her shirt and shows boob. Like with uh, with like the bra on or Mm-mm, straight boob. Like, nipples and everything. Yep. This premi- this premiered in the United States. This was allowed in the United States. Oh Christ! Anywho. Anywho, the rival crew is on their school campus. I guess I don't know. It's hard to pick locations in this film. Um, oh yeah, there's something about the filmography I can criticize. There's no fucking establishing shots in this film. You never, the best you can gather, like, the only reason I knew where I was half the time is because some of the movie takes place in the apartment, and if I'm not in the apartment, I know I'm somewhere else. That's it. There's a point where they're just sitting on chairs, and I'm just like, where the fuck are you? Establishing shots film. They're useful. Yes. Yes, it is, John. It very much is. Although... The ages of the ages of the main characters are confirmed. I don't know if the ages of the rival dance crew are confirmed because they're barely in the movie. They look to me they, they're it they may be they look older to me, but I I still think they would be underage. Regardless, one of the main care one of the rival dance crews crew members basically throws a tin can at them like throws a soda can at the cuties yep and amy in her infinite wisdom just goes up and smacks a bitch yep and this is one of the scenes that people have like major major complaints about it's that in the course of this fight while everybody else is trying to break it up, Amy is pantsed. And not like, oh, her pants are down and it's a quick, like, it's, oh, pants down, mm, cutaway shot. No, it's a, we're focused on her butt, we're focused on her butt, we're focused on her butt. Oh, there go her pants. I mean, there's, and, and there's like, a lot you of can, focus You can much. see the pants slowly sliding down her legs. And I was like, really? That it. Th- they're. Uh, really? Film. But what happens after is, I, I think so much worse and, and Ryan you know what I'm talking about right um the bathroom yes and the cell phone yes yes that so we I, we mentioned earlier that she stole a cell phone that cell phone belongs to her cousin or her nephew or something yeah it was like I think it was like maybe in her yeah, I think it's her cousin phone. yeah yeah he tries she... to he tries to take the phone back from her. Mm-hmm. And then she she go she locks herself in the bathroom, and then proceeds to pull down her pants and panties. Takes with the phone takes a shot of her vagina, and then publishes it online. Yep. And I'm surprised the cousin never gets arrested. I was actually expecting police to show up and arrest him for, like, mm. child pornography possession. Yeah. And it's this point that all the other girls... Uh, by the way, during this shot, we don't see anything. But 
we see the pants and panties go down. Yeah, at least. we see the pants and panties go down, which is ugh. Like we we could have not seen that at all. Like this could have been a waist up shot, and we could have still put together what she was doing. And it is after this point that the movie just spirals out of control. So basically, oh, oh, there was a scene that made me gag. And it wasn't that one. So while the cuties are all still together and the fat girl has been banished to the nether realm because we don't need her for the plot yet. Um... They're just hanging out in a park somewhere, waiting for her, uh, the results of the qualifier. One of the girls finds a condom. Oh yeah, actually no, that was that was before they yeah, it's before they exile the fat girl. Oh, it is before they exile the fat girl, isn't it? Yeah. yeah when all five of them were getting along. Yeah. Yeah, they. They. Yeah, she. She blows into the condom. Like, it was like, she picks it up off the ground, and I was like, no. Oh, and then she, she blows into it, and I'm like, no! I th Okay, I thought, I thought, she, I assumed that she probably, she bought that from a store or something, thinking it was a balloon or something. No, no, it, it's very clear in the scene that she doesn't know what that is. Like she says, I wouldn't have done it if I didn't if I knew what it was. And and, I'm, and the whole time, and then the next scene, and the reason they they all like freak out is because people with AIDS use them. And I'm just sitting here like, please no, for the love of God no. And then they wash her mouth out with soap. A and I was just like, blah, blah. the whole time, because I was like, no, 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 this is unacceptable. So, after the pantsing scene, and after the scene which follows the pantsing scene, she has published her goods for the world to see. An 11-year-old girl has published her goods for the world to see. And she then proceeds to punch the fuck out of one of her classmates. I think basically because he calls her a slut. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, she... Yeah, she. I don't. I don't remember if she actually punches him or not, but she does. She she does like sort of grab a pencil and stabs him in the head with it. Yeah, like. And then her mom and her aunt find out, and then there's this. And then I think, honestly. And then the movie just sort of loses itself. It's like, we don't know where we're going. And then, basically, and then, the final day, the day of her father's wedding arrives. And it is, of course, the same day that, um, the same day that the finals are happening. It is during this that it is, d after she has published her goods for the world to see, She's basically been kicked out of the group, and they brought the fat girl back. And the fat girl has, like, some sort of eating disorder, which is never mentioned, but it's, like, one half scene. Then, she proceeds to wait for... She gets changed, and so she's dressed very, very, like... Provocatively, like yeah, if you've seen the poster, her. that's that's what she's wearing. Yeah, she it's I guess her uniform for the show. Yeah, and they proceed, and she proceeds to push the fat girl into the river, so she can't come to the dance. And there's a moment of hesitation 
because it looks like the fat girl isn't swimming. Oh, yeah. Does yeah, she... she's... I skipped that, so I was like, no, I'm done. I'm done with this yeah. scene. We're moving on. Okay, so what happened was that she she's able she she's able to she's able to grab onto some, one of those uh orange floating things in the water. You know what I'm talking uh, about? Yeah. So yeah, she yeah, once she grabs onto it then then Amy walks away. Okay. So I guess he so waits. So I guess she make... stops it outright murder, but yeah, I guess she, I guess she was probably starting to feel some hesitation. Then once she realized that, okay, she's not gonna die, then she leaves. Yeah, and she goes away, and then they do their final performance, which I skipped through because after like the first minute of it, I was like, oh, this goes on for the whole song, doesn't it? And I was like, oh, well, no, no, we're not doing that. Sorry, bye. And after that, the movie basically ends. That there's no real resolution between the cuties or anything like that. But, um... Okay, so I guess the big the big message that all of this, all that dancing they were doing is wrong is right at the end of the dance. Just she, this bunch of parents are shaking their heads and one creepy guy nodding. Yeah. And then she, and then she just starts crying and leaves. Yep. That's it. That's the movie. And then she, I guess, makes up with her mother. The mother says, like, okay, you don't have to go to your father's wedding. And then... And everything that, is okay. Yep, and it ends on a really, really creepy shot of her just bouncing into the camera on occasion. Yeah, so she puts... You see on the bed, you see her see her, her, her dress. And her and cutie's also, uniform. Like it's supposed to symbolize that she's ditching both extremes, picking some some moderate kind yeah. of thing. She's now wearing regular clothes. She goes outside and starts just starts playing jump rope with some neighborhood kid. Yeah, basically. that's it. So she, I guess I guess she made new friends with the kids. I don't know. Like that's the problem. It, it's it's such an abrupt ending. I'm like, are we not gonna get any resolution? Did did the cuties not learn anything? Was this not growth for everybody? Uh, I and so I'm just sitting. I, I guess not. Honestly, the one defense I could conceivably make for the film, it would be an interpretation of Amy's that the film itself is. Amy's film. What do you mean? I mean that literally Amy is filming it. Honestly, like, some of the more disturbing scenes in here are the one, number, the, the stairway scene is bad. Like, it's bad. It's really, really bad. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you more about like what I could defend this movie on in a bit. But I think we should talk about some of the dancing scenes. The stairway scene is bad. I think the scene with her mom and her the and the hag oh, yeah. throwing water on her that's so much worse. Yeah, I think yeah, they're like throwing thing with cold water at her. Yeah. I guess trying to cleanse her of her sins. Yeah. That and she, it, it's basic. There's no music. There's nothing else. There's no one else around. Like it circles her as she begins just sort of twerking and see. It, it looks like at first she's seizing, and then after about a minute of the camera just circling her and you just hearing her breathe. very much turns into her twerking and dancing and humping the ground. Like, and the thing is, the way the movie, like, uh, I'm going, I'm going to go into my, the, pseudo defense of this film i don't think this film should have ever been made i think it is straight up child exploitation 
100% and no ifs, ands, or buts. But the one defense I could see, I could see an interpretation for, is that the film is filmed by Amy. It is through her that this film happens. So basically what I what I mean is at first as the movie at first and you don't see much like sexualization or anything like that. The young girls do are not sexual or anything like that. It is vague at best. Like, again, the laundry scene could have flown under my radar if it hadn't been for the ironing board. The same is true of the first dance scene. I mean, I don't know, man. But, I mean, I during during the during that laundry room dance scene, I kind I can kind of pick up on things. I mean, yeah. Like, it's Even. very clear she's dancing to, intending to be provocative, but there's not an audience for it. Like, she's just dancing to dance at that point. And I'm not going to go, and I'm not going to say that young children should be shunned from dancing sexually when they're alone and don't have an audience. Because they can dance however they want. But it, the problem is, that as the film progresses and as Amy sort of becomes more and more ex like, and this is back to my defense, quote unquote, air, not quote unquote, uh, quotes around the defense, air quotes. Um, Amy introduces the sexual element. She does. There, there, there's a very much, it's very much 100% shown that it is Amy that introduces this element to the group. Like, she teaches them how to twerk. She teaches them how to do the, like, hu the humping and all they, that they do at that final performance. She teaches them that. And it is in a montage in, like, the last in a part of the movie. And it's only at this point that it really, really gets bad. And my, basically my defense would be that this is Amy sort of swinging up and seeing exploit, sexual exploit, sexualization as something, as something she needs, as something she he wants for herself. I it, like I can only interpret it charitably as that is the only defense I would accept. Like, oh, it's it's told from a the film is told inherently from Amy's point of view. So the more she sexualizes herself and the girls around her, the movie proceeds to get more and more sexual about the girls. It makes sense. That makes sense. That interpretation makes sense, at least to me. I don't think it's what the film intended. And that... I, I, I can't say that for 100% certain. But I don't think that should be an interpretation that should be allowed on the table, really. But, in all honesty, it's probably the best defense anyone's come up with. You still there? Oh yeah. Um, I don't really have much else to add. Yeah, like it, I found I, it kind of, I found it kind of funny that, or right before, or in the scene where, or in the that area where they where they practice, like the whole the like under the bridge, there's a, there or there's one of the pillars has a bunch of graffiti on it with a. It even has a, a hammer and a sickle, and right below it is fuck capitalism. You know what two scenes we've forgotten that I just now remembered? What was that? The laser tag scene 
and the br and the cousin getting his phone back. We mentioned the cousin getting his phone back. What we didn't mention was the laser tag scene. Yeah, the laser tag scene was kind of inconsequential, though. No, 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 no. What happens during the laser tag scene? After that, after they get caught, the girls find out that they qualified. So they're excited. And the manager of the place is basically saying, yeah, we're going to call the police or you can give us your parents' numbers. And so Amy, in her infinite wisdom, decides to twerk in front of these two grown men. One of whom basically says, yeah, this is hot. And the other one's like, get the fuck out. And so they leave. So basically, they, they trespass and get off scot-free. Then, and this might, if it, did, if it wasn't followed by the most egregious scene in this movie, like the dan the final dance scene is awful. It's uncomfortable to watch. It's horrifying. It's bad. But the the publishing her the publishing her dick pic basically to the world is the most egregious scene in this movie. But it is preceded by her basically saying if you. Basically, trying to seduce her cousin to get to the phone, to get her, to get his phone back. Like she takes off, like she takes off her, her jacket, reveals that she has a crop top on and everything else, and sort of slowly begins unbuttoning her pants. Oh yeah, that's right, right, or that's right before she goes. Yes, right it's right before she goes to the bathroom. And I'm just like, there's no way this movie is this bold. Is this bold to do this? Because it, who, because the people that watched that petition to get this thing canned, this would have been scene number one. This would have been scene number one on a list of scenes. Thankfully, the cousin basically told, tells her to fuck off. And it's this point that she freaks out, grabs the phone, and proceeds to do what she did. Yeah, I'm just I'm just glad that mm. I'm glad nothing bad happened to the cousin because I kept expecting the police to come to it to come to their door. Yeah. I kept expecting the police to come to my door. God. Alright. <laughs> Hmm. So now want, that you've uh, heard our takes on it, I pulled up a lovely, lovely WAPO article. Oh, cool. That we will talk about. Oh, Ch Washington Post. Do you really want this? Do you really want this to be the hill you die on? <sighs> it's so many people have chosen this hill to die on, and I don't know why. Uh, uh, like I said before, before this. Before we went live, I, I wonder if a lot of it just has to do it simply with tribalism, because a lot of conservatives are angry about it, or I should say anybody who's a, not a far leftist who is labeled as a conservative by the far left, Basically, because yes. those, those because those people are enraged by it. Yeah, the far leftists instinctively have to be for it because Basically. it's like all tribalism. Basically, yes. If you are for it, we are against it. If you are against it, we must be for it. That's what I suspect, but I don't know. They could just all be creep. I, I'm reminded of uh, Aiden Paladin's uh, two-part video about the left uh, advocating for pedophilia. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> Cuties is an unflinching look at what it means to be a preteen girl. No wonder people can't handle it. Meanwhile, this, this is the picture you chose. All right. Let, let's see what Monica Hesse 
has to say. <clears throat> if you can weed whack past the drama surrounding it, angry politicians, Q, Q and on, and a terrible ad campaign followed by a misguided petitions, you can perhaps enjoy Cuties for what it is, one of the mo more compelling movies you've likely seen in months. Funny and deeply uncomfortable, well, sweet and sometimes sad. Well, you hit the nail on the head with deeply uncomfortable. Everything else, yep. I, I don't think anything in this movie was funny. Like, the condom scene would have maybe gotten a laugh out of me if it were, I don't know. I don't know that that scene could have gotten a move, a laugh out of uh, me at, at any I'd, point. I'd say maybe there is like, one, maybe one scene that I found mildly, mildly, mildly humorous when she, when they were, when she was in the, I guess in the little, I guess, women's mosque room, and they were all doing a silent prayer. She just has like a, she's had like a big veil over her face and she's just watching a bunch of, bunch of grown women twerking like in a rap video yeah that i thought was kind of funny watching that silently while everyone else is praying <laughs> that was kind of funny not enough to make me laugh but i thought that was actually well-timed humor i never would have stumbled on it were it not for the increasingly frantic discussions happening around it which is a long way of saying thanks ted cruz you say that like it's a bad thing yeah i <laughs> There's so many people on the internet that seem to have this raging hate boner for Ted Cruz of all people. I don't get it. He seems like a milk to pretty milk toast kind of guy. I remember. I ever watched uh, Trey the Explainer? No. Like he does a lot of science videos, and he he did like one. He does like a couple videos about religion and the Bible, and like he in during the video he stops to try to he just stops to throw shade at Ted Cruz, and it's like why. I mean, is he really, like, is there no other Republican senators to pick on? A French film director by, I'm not going to pronounce that, uh, Cuties was the subject of controversy even before it landed on Netflix last week. The streaming platform previewed it with a poster of teenage girls in scant costumes accompanied by the synopsis, Amy, 11, becomes fascinated with a twerking dance crew. I mean, it's true. Uh, the, the, the synopsis is true. <clears throat> Yeah, this is, that's absolutely true. That's what happens. Things went south. Tip Cruz, who either didn't see the film movie or didn't understand it, claimed the film routinely fetishizes and sexualizes these preteen, these pre-adolescent girls. Well, he it, it, as it turns out, I mean, he, was it, right, he was right. Yes, he was right to, it, to assume, it does. It really even does. if he even if he didn't watch it, he was right to suspect it. Exactly. And called on the Department of Justice to investigate whether Netflix, its its, its executives, or the filmmakers violated any federal laws against the production and distribution of child pornography. Yes, good on Ted. Ted Cruz. Preemptively hating the movie. He was a bipartisan affair. Christine Pelosi, daughter of House Speaker Nancy, joined the hashtag Cancel Netflix, asking. The platform to apologize and this weekend netflix's cancellation rates were eight times higher than they'd been in the month before according to analysis in variety magazine a multi-year cancellation peak which is a, which is all a shame because cuties is the kind of story that isn't told well very often and deserves to be told more it wasn't told well at all thank you it focuses on 11 an 11 year old girl named amy as she figures out what it means to be her to her to be a woman in, in an era of TikTok celebrities and viral fame. I mean, I guess. But there's so much more to the film than that. And, it like, it, it's, it's bad. Very bad. Like to cure, I don't, uh, like I don't pronounce this, Amy is the daughter of Senegalese immigrants. Amy's parents are now raising their family in a working class Parisian neighborhood. They're, 
Their culture pr permits polygamy, and when the movie opens, opens, Amy's father has recently traveled back to Senegal to bring home a second wife. All they wish for them is they marry for love, Amy's mother says in a phone call to her relative. Then she hangs up and, not realizing her daughter's in the same room, bursts into tears. Yeah, that was actually that was actually a good scene. That yes, was like it was very emotionally compelling. Too bad the scene, too bad a couple scenes before that. Too bad it's very clear her mother. Oh shit! You know what happened? Her what? mother fainted. Her mother fainted randomly, and it's never brought up again. Oh yeah, forgot like, about that. There are that. so many things in this movie that happen and just nobody talks about. Like, there's no consequences, there's no follow-through. Ooh, there's nothing. You know what really sucks? Is that at the end of the movie, you can see people dancing in the wedding, and it's just like, hey, mom, your daughter's doing sexy dancing. You found out about it. How about you teach her what teach how about you ooh, be a mother and mentor her instead of letting hag do it because hag got married at 11 the apartment building's laundry room is where amy first meets her neighbor and classmate angelica who dances as she folds her clothes amy becomes entranced by angelica and her midriff bearing hip swiveling friends who call themselves cuties and dream of winning lo a local dance competition soon amy's part of the crew who too choreographing twerks and pouts and trying her her own t t shirt so they write up her and tying her own t shirt so they write up her navel. Yes, once again, totally not exploiting children. <clears throat> Ted Cru uh, Ted Cruz is the crazy one here. You can see where this could get uncomfortable for viewers. Oh, oh, sweetheart, we haven't gotten to where it gets uncomfortable for the viewers yet. The dance routines become progressively more explicit, and the camera filming them is unflinching. Yeah, that's the problem. You can't say that, oh, it's a good thing that this is child, this is, it's a good thing, because it, it basically blasts in the audience's face, this is what it's like to be a preteen girl. One minute long sequence set to upbeat music as the girls finalize their routine it includes a secret series of close ups on the girls, gyrating thighs, butts, and stomachs. The movie was filmed with a counselor on set and the project was approved by the French government child protection authorities. What? Well, well that, that should tell you that... everything you need to know about <laughs> everything that's wrong with this film. Yeah, that, that does not say good things about French government. No, 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 no. Oh, let's think about this. There was a counselor on set. There was... This movie made its actors so uncomfortable. It's prob not only its actors, but it's par most likely the parents of those actors as well. So uncomfortable... That they had to have a counselor on set. And. Really? French government? Really? You let this shit slide. Like I, I don't. It doesn't say. It doesn't say good things. That this. This sentence exists. About right, this so, movie. Yeah, so what. Uh, do you know what country Roman Polanski is currently living in? France. If just a shot in the dark. Um, let's find out. Healthy adults won't see these characters as sex objects. They'll see them as children, and they'll see them the dancing as disturbing. It, um, that's because yeah, it actually, means... Yeah, Roman, actually, I think Roman Polanski is living in France now. Remember, remember this man This man raped a girl. Mm. And, fled, and fled to fled to Europe. Healthy adults won't see the characters as sex objects. They'll see them as children, and they'll see the dancing as disturbing. Correct. That's correct. 
100% true. It is very disturbing. And it doesn't... Like, that's my thing. A lot of the dancing in this film would have been uncomfortable to watch. But if it wasn't for the blatant... Like, for the way they were shot. Like... We don't need close-ups of their butts and their thighs and their stomachs and their faces as they, like, m make O-face, basically. We don't need those. It's enough for us, the for we, the audience, to see this as a static shot and watch them as they, sexual as they dance very, very sexually. Like... The montage had it been had it the like the the twerking montage, which I think is a, a bad scene in this film. If it had been shot differently, I would have said, I would stand with this 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 writer and say, yeah, this movie very much portrays the sort of disconnect. Between, for young girls in the modern age, who am I? Like, the movie asks this question about five hours, about an hour and 30 minutes too late. When, when shit has hit the fan so hard, or, and nothing is, re and no one is redeemable. And no character is redeemable, and no character is worthwhile. It asks the question too late. Had this movie started out with asking the question, Amy, uh, my name is Amy, blah, 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 I don't know who I am, that, I think, would have been a better movie, and I could see myself sta standing here saying, this movie made me uncomfortable, that's a good thing, let's move, that's a good thing, but the way this movie is shot, and the way these scenes specifically and what she does and how she does it are all very very clearly exploitative and there's a difference between presenting something as a question of what is this like versus presenting something and saying after the presenting something saying oh people don't like it Presenting something, seeing the backlash and saying, oh, it's, it's a, di you're interpreting it wrong. But they might also wonder how unhealthy adults could perceive what's on, on the screen. Whose gaze does the camera represent? How is this scene supposed to make us feel? No. No. The, these are irrelevant questions. Yeah, it's just, uh, just so stupid. Like, yes, yes, of course it's disturbing. That doesn't make it okay to actually show it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, this is akin to, to to making a movie a movie criticizing animal cruelty, and then the actors like straight up pick a dog on screen. Yeah, exactly. Like even even like the Babylon Bee made a joke about that. Like it, it it's. Like, instead of showing the aftermath of animal cruelty, like, Disney Disney has a film, uh, like it's a short film, about a pit bull that's a fighting dog. Like, it's meant to, f it is a, a ch like, it's meant to fight. And you see it dragged into a fighting pit, and it loses... And its owner just chucks it out. Like, we see the before. We see... We get hit. We perceive the abuse. We can in... We infer the abuse. Oops, and the horror. And it's shocking and saddening. And we process those emotions. And then we see the aftermath. And we process those emotions. This movie doesn't do that. It says, look at these children. You are now... These children are sexy.
It, like, that's the, that's the biggest problem. The movie doesn't say, we are unobtrusive observers. The movie isn't filmed as if the camera is an unobtrusive, unintrusive observer. As an object, not unintrusive, an objective observer. It is not filmed that way. It is not filmed as if we are following this person just because. Because her journey is the most radical. It very much asks the asks the viewer to sit back and be aroused or be titillated by these girls. It that is very much what it asks you to do with the way it filmed with the way the camera work is done. These are the kind of nuanced discussions art is meant to encourage. And the fast twitch social media and that fast twitch social media has squashed. What do you mean art is meant to encourage? I don't disagree. Alright. So, I think the best example I can come up with for this is... Um, there's a piece. Uh, you, I don't know if you talked about it in college or not. Uh, I know I had to. There's a piece in a gallery somewhere, or, or at least in like the 1920s or something. It was basically a urinal that uh, some sculptor basically took out, oh, took all the parts out of it. It didn't function anymore. He put it in a gallery and said, "This is art." And the question became, well. Is it art? Because it no longer serves a purpose. What is it? Per was it? What is it meant to be? And then you have the whole Dadaist movement after World War One, and it, it's art history is a mess of constantly questioning what is art, and because art is constantly, because the definition of what art is constantly shifts with the cultural zeitgeist means that art fundamentally has no concrete definition yeah yeah i would say instead of saying like what is and what isn't art i think people should say what is good art and what is awful art correct there so, we go the urinal is awful art a I lot agree. of the uh, abstract painting abstract paintings a lot of modern art they're ter it's terrible art renaissance renaissance paintings renaissance sculptures that is good art. Uh, I, you don't even have to go to the Renaissance. Back to the Renaissance. Let's talk about Van Gogh. Let's talk about... Um, there were... Uh, the uh, Realism. And even surreal art can be good. The problem is art has... The problem is Dadaism existed and it basically killed art. So what is dot dotism? Is that just like Dada a is a dot on a canvas? Dada is an art movement. How do you spell and it? And D A D A. Oh, da da. Dada. I thought I said. I thought I said. Oh, I thought I said dot. No, Dada. It it is an art movement af post World War One. Post World War One, it was an art movement that basically existed that said humanity is so awful to have create to. Ha have basically um, to have gone to war for what we did for basically for World War One existing and ar one artist and I cannot remember his name basically said uh, it basically said humanity is unworthy of art humanity is unworthy of the beauty pot we can create so he basically created art to destroy art. It is basically Dada is noise. Wow, uh, but well, even back then, artists were pretentious. Yes, it is utterly purposeless. It has no function other than to destroy art. It is intended to be bad art. So is that like why Picasso makes such weird artwork? No, Picasso is just a weirdo. Anyway. <clears throat> Yeah. So, Instead uh, of, yeah. Was, so hot, yeah. Hot take. So hot take. Hitler has makes better paintings than Picasso. 
I've never seen any of Hitler's paintings. I'm looking at them right now. They're actually they're actually pretty good. Anyway, <clears throat> makes you wonder what 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 if what if he just stuck the painting. Anyway, oh. instead of wrestling with the content, we have QAnon Facebook group speculating that maybe the film was secretly funded by the Obamas. Okay, so what's a very nuanced uh, definition for QAnon? I don't know. Because I googled it and I, I see right-wing conspiracy theory. Basically, I think that's what it is. I think that's just shorthand, journalist shorthand for it. Okay, how about this? I did. A, a counter-argument. I did wrestle with the content. I did examine it. I did, in fact, look at this movie. I did, in fact, try and take a step back and say, what did this movie have an interpretation I'm missing? And the only one I came up with is the one I mentioned towards the beginning of the po- at the po- of the podcast. Like, that is the only interpretation I can make that would make this movie even semi-acceptable as the way it is. It's unacceptable as a whole, but if that is what the interpret... If that is the intent behind the director, which I don't know, he's... I don't think he's said anything. Regardless, I don't think this film should have been made at all. I don't think this film should be shot the way it is. I don't think this film should exist on Netflix or any other platform. Agreed. And and it it pains me to say that because I don't believe in deplatforming people. I don't believe in deplatforming people for their opinions or for the content they produce. But this, but there is a line, and that line become is should be when it becomes exploitative. Or breaks the law. And even then. Exploitation has its place. I just. I don't know where to sit. With this film. And that's. that I think that's a problem. Is that. I don't believe. That anything. I don't believe in burning books basically. I don't believe in burning books. But this film should not be on the platform it's on. Yeah, agreed. Or at least Netflix should come out and say, yeah, we're not deplatforming it because we believe in free speech, but this movie does sexually exploit... This movie may be considered exploitative by some viewers. You know, I think what what could have worked if you wanted to have a have a story that that does sexualize children while simultaneously condemning it. It the story should have been a book. It would have worked so much better as a book. I I can agree with that. I mean, cause I've I mean, recently I've been I've been getting into like the Game of Thrones book series, and yeah, in the books the characters are a lot younger than they are on the show. So I mean, like mm-hmm. Daenerys has a pedophilic relationship with Cal Drogo. But because it's a but because it's a book, you can kind of get you can kind of get away with you can kind of get away with that. Yeah. Since you're not actually having an, an a real minor going through something like that. Though, then again, Game of Thrones also takes place in a in a medieval fantasy series. So the laws that the laws and rules are different than like modern day western culture what careful viewers will miss though it though is that the cuties are not portrayed as aspirational the group is portrayed as an escape tunnel and only leads to another sinkhole well, when Amy posts an intimate photo of herself on social media desperately looking for the approval desperately looking for approval, a male classmate takes it as an invitation to slap her butt. And her new friends find the picture appalling. They're sassy, not slutty. They can, they explain, why can't Amy tell the difference? 
Oh uh, no! The, uh, realistically, those girls would gl would grow up to be sluts when when they get older. They Even strike me still, that's not an excuse. Like I'm not saying they're this is a incorrect. That's absolutely true. All of all of this is absolutely true. The I mean, they they strike me as the kind of people who will one day grow up and go, and go to frat parties to get dick. Like. What the everything in this paragraph is true, absolutely. That's what happens. But the problem is, the movie portrays this as inherently titillating. Like it portrays the cuties as being sexually arousing. On multiple occasions, even before or the shit starts hitting the fan in terms of group dynamics. Like, the laser tag scene happens with all five of them. Was it all five of them? No, it wasn't. It was four, but... Like, the laser tag scene happens bef well before the group has any sort of, like, genuine problems. They're still all getting along. They're excited, blah, and everything. Like, this is not, like, this... Happens so much later in the film. Um, compared to. In comparison to everything else. This is not. Like. This is true. Like. This is true. The group dynamic. Basically pulls Amy in. At, in a horrifying direction. That doesn't mean it's not exploitative. The film itself is not exploitative. But no, she can't because the divisions are baffling. At home, she's presented with a version of womanhood that means means marriage and acquiescence. Out in the world, she sees another version that means sexiness and Instagram likes. Amy fumbles and falters her way through the film, learning that, that she's meant to be appealing, but chaste, naughty, but good, but a girl, but a woman. In the end, she's just tired and confused. Okay, here's the problem. There are other girls in the school. And I would say this interpretation bears out if Amy had had friends beforehand. If after the cuties had assaulted her, basically, she actually, like, she met uh, Angelica in the apartment and genuinely became friends with her first before and I don't mean like the way the film does it where it's like oh we I hid you from your brother now we're friends we're friends now but a like genuine friendship where she slowly begins to bring her into the group like the sand lot yes where, like, it, it's very much, it's very clear that, no, this isn't an aspiration. She doesn't aspire to be like these girls. Those, these girls aren't aspirational. But she doesn't see the other, uh, the, like, other side. And this is a, and this is also wrong, because there's multiple scenes in the movie where they just do shit as friends. Like, they're not being cute. They're not doing st shit for Instagram likes. They're not dancing. Like, there's multiple points in the film where it's very clear that these are young girls being friends. Like, and it... it, it if 
Amy were like and Amy would not like unless Amy is a post which you know it's kind of true she doesn't have any character to speak of but if Amy were as were a post I'd say yeah this interpretation bears out but it's shown that she can exist in the world without being sexy or without being extremely chaste. Like, that's the problem. The, the film tries to do both and fails at both. But what makes it so much worse is that it actively exploits, it actively sexualizes its child actors. Part of why I think of people are struggling with this movie is that, that while it doesn't sexualize tween age girls, it is frank. It is a frank look at their exploration of sexuality, the influences they respond to in order to or rebel against, the power they think they have, the things they think they understand. No. It I mean, it doesn't it doesn't change that it they I mean it but has the, it has like, underage girls working you it can't whatever you hold on let me finish you have underage girls working in this movie anything you say is invalid there is no way of defense there is no de valid defense that excuses that and it absolutely does sexualize them there is th like the stair scene. The stair scene is hands down the best one. There is no reason for it to exist. If this was them getting their final routine down, as you, as this author interprets it, why film the damn thing? Why film it at all? Well, why, why is it so thoroughly coordinated? It's very clear this is... It, this is part of their routine. It does. There's not like it's not practice. It's very clear. This is a stop and be titillated moment. Like if, if you ever watched porn with a plot, a rare few among the audience, there will be points where it's very clear. This is where you stop and you jerk off before we get the plot going again. I mean, but well, then by that point, I won't even finish the video. <clears throat> Never mind, keep going. <clears throat> <clears throat> Spend an hour on social media and you'll see preteens, often in makeup, pouting their lips, and strutting their stuff as if they were grown women. Yeah. And... Yeah, true. But you know what they don't do? They don't... How do I put this? Because he's right. You'll see preteens in makeup pouting their lips. Like every preteen girl will ever has an Instagram where she posts, posts pictures of herself duck facing or whatever. But that's the thing. Most young girls know where the line is. And this movie pretends that young women are stupid enough not to know where the line is. This movie completely ignores any sort of sense of, like, self young women have. And while that sense of self as young women is absolutely 100% malleable, it is nowhere near the level that this would need to be to, ha to have what happens in this film happen.
Like the first dance, I'll keep coming back to it. The first dance scene, the first time we see he, the girls, uh, the first four girls filmed by Amy dance is about as far as I think many of the young girls of today would take it. They would not do what happens later. In one scene, the girls are full of bravado. Right, so it's it's all, here's one thing I've been wondering in the movie. So they they post a lot of their they post their their stuff on social media. So I'm I'm wondering who are the people giving it like. I yeah. mean, realistically, who would be the people giving that giving those likes? That's a very would they good be question. Other kids, or would they be people who will be having their doors kicked down? I don't know. In one scene, the girls full of bravado and giggles flirt with a boy at the bus stop. In the next scene, one of them discovers a condom and not knowing what it is, picks it up. You're going to get AIDS, her friends shriek, terrified, dragging her to the bathroom where they pour liquid soap in her mouth, both convinced this is suitable protection. Okay, there's a problem with this, is that this scene, is that these, yeah, that's true, these two scenes are in the film, it, and honestly, if the film were taking it as obje as objective, and not saying this scene exists to titillate, and saying many of these scenes exist to titillate, I would say yes, this is absolutely something that I would would say, yeah, this this is exactly how young girls are. Like, they know, but they don't know. Their kids and their desire to grow up, up only underscores how young they are. Often, when Holly gives us Hollywood gives us stories on this talk, topic, they're filmed like Lolita, in which a middle-aged pedophile preys on his stepdaughter. Er, the story is told from his perspective. He tries to convince us that she's the seductress, but she's never er, given an inner monologue of her own. That film is explicitly about pedophilia, but it's more com but it's more comfortable viewing in some ways than Cuties. It allows the viewer to falsely believe that girl are complicit in their own sexualization and that they are inviting the leering and harassment cuties on the other hand is an excellent look at bet at between this at the moment where children are old enough to mimic but not old enough to understand it exists in a world which in which adults are tangential and adult men are mostly non-existent it cares only about what it means to be a young black immigrant girl uh, of course it allows once that again, right once again Underage girls constantly twerking. Your argument has no validity. It allows that experience to be compl complicated, silly, scary, and moving. It centers an experience that has long been under underrepresented. In fact, its critics, not film critics who love it, find cuties so terrifying. The fact that its fil critics, not film critics who love it, that says a lot about film critics, find cutie so terrifying is perhaps the biggest clue that they need to watch it and then demand more movies like it. No. No. Please do not do that. I've seen this movie. And while I am very much someone who could see this interpretation, could see an interpretation of this film as being something that is overall good viewing it in its present state cannot be done so. it cannot do so because the movie sexualizes its op the movie objectifies the girls and this is a problem see here's the thing the author may have had a point with all this if the movie didn't sexualize the girls if the movie was, for all intents and purposes, 
fr shot in done in one shot. And I mean, here's our shot. We don't pan. We don't zoom. We don't do anything. It is a static shot of them dancing of them twerking of them being sexual then it is the characters that are objectifying themselves and so we the audience can say yes this is a problem but i get it they don't they know but they don't know the problem comes when The, fit, the camera begins to pan up their bodies as if they're grown women, focus on their butts as they twerk, twerk or their faces as they, they like put their f finger in their mouth and go and act like they're experiencing pleasure. Many of the f shots, especially during the dance scenes. Hell, even during, like, the, a few of the other scenes, like the pantsing scene. The pantsing scene is a bad one. Like, that doesn't need to be in the movie. It exists because it is intended to titillate. It, it, if I were to say, I were to respond to this article, I'd be like, the pantsing scene exists. Why? Why does the pantsing scene exist? Why does the dancing on dancing on the stairs scene exist? They don't need to. So what? And I feel like the reason that the pantsing scene exists is to catalyze the fine is to catalyze that final third act basically. The reason that that scene exists is to purely, not only to very clearly titillate the audience, but also to catalyze the third act. Netflix assumed the risk of the, the filmmakers took for the purpose of of bringing us this uncomfortable, challenging, but ultimately worthwhile work. Can we handle it, or should it be watched with training wheels? With film studies and women's history professors on speed dial to prevent us from misinterpreting a critique of society as an endorsement. In the end, well, I won't spoil the end of the movie, except to say that after watching it, viewers are likely to spend a lot of time thinking about girlhood. The girls they know, the girls they were, the girls they want to raise, the forces that make that difficult, the bubbles we try to keep girls in, when only people we're actually protecting are ourselves. Honestly, I've got I I've got nothing apart from just sounding like a broken record. Like I've. I, I I think I've given this my most charitable go. So yeah, in conclusion, it's a shit movie. The characters are the characters are detestable. The, the plot is all over the place, and it and it exploits children while simultaneously trying to claim that child exploitation is wrong. Yeah, basically. If you want a if you want a good movie about a new kid trying to make friends, watch The Sandlot. If you want a good movie that takes place in Paris, watch Ratatouille. Yeah, 100%. And like I said, I did. And, and that's the problem. Like, that's the problem I've, I've seen with a lot of the defenders of Cutie. They're acting like, oh, if you watch the film, well... You didn't watch the film. Yeah, I did. It, well, then clearly you're misinterpreting it. I'm not misinterpreting it. The I did step back and say, could this have been what you say it is? And I find more and more as I examine the story and the plot and the characters and their actions, no. 
you can't. You cannot justify the decisions made in this movie. And, and we didn't even, we barely talked about the writing in this film. The writing in this film's awful, by the way. It, it might just be mistranslation. As in, like, the writing in French films is different than the writing in American films. But a lot of the characters' actions and... A, a lot of the characters' actions seem to be either absolutely nonsensical or purely, like, just reprehensible. Well, I guess now I realize that the the French guys from Monty Python and the Holy Grail were, were actually a very accurate representation of French people. Mm. Yeah, I... Though I imagine there's probably a, 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 a sizable amount of French people that are probably also kind of looking at, looking at this and going, what the fuck? Yeah. Yep. So I anyway. guess that wraps things up. Yep. Thank you all so much for watching this. Please don't watch Cuties. Um, other than that, we should hopefully be back next week. I got a new job. That's why I was gone for two weeks. So now I have Saturdays off. Cool. Which means I will not be coming home. And I won't be coming home at 9 o'clock. So hopefully you'll see more content from this channel now on. from now on. It's good to hear. I might be starting a Twitch uh, Let's Play of Met the Metro series. That seems like something fun. But we shall see. Anyway. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, y'all remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe, uh, do share us with your friends. So like I said. Like I've always I've said for like three months now I think. YouTube is 100% suppressing this channel. So likes and shares and comments help us out. Uh, this has been Clayton and Ryan for Filthy Casuals on the Academic Alehouse. Uh, sometimes Ryan, sometimes Caesar. Whatever. <laughs>